Hello, Rossoneri fans. Welcome back to this new edition of our AC Milan Talk. Today is a special episode because we are running towards the uh, derby in the semifinals of Champions League against Inter. Uh, Sheridan Bird, welcome. Hi, Juicy. Great to see you. What an exciting time. And Adriano Del Monte, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Juicy. It's great to be back. Cannot wait to get into the talk with, of course, Inter in the Champions League to come. We're going to be discussing everything about the Rossoneri team. We're ready, so let's begin. Let's start right away from the derby that we have in front of us and then we will go back to what happened against Napoli, Sheridan. It's going to be absolutely incredible. This city will be in the spotlight of world football. Milan against the Cousins Inter. There'll be passion, there'll be pressure. Hopefully there'll be fine performances, let's say, from the men in red and black. And uh, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be absolutely wonderful. It's been a while, but we always say that the Champions League is in this club's DNA. Well, it's coming back in a big way. Adriano, after 20 years, Incredible, it really, really incredible, really special and what a time for this club. 20 years, yes, for this battle between Milan and Inter and of course in, in the semi-finals, but for Milan, for this proud club, the first time in 16 years back to a Champions League semi-final. These are images from that match 20 years ago. Some of the most famous names in the history of this sport, let alone just this club, of course, Paolo Maldini there. Look, a lot of respect between these two clubs. It's always a wonderful spectacle. It's always a look, it's something great to be a part of. And I think uh, this city will be a very special place to be when these two teams meet in a few weeks' time because iconic moments like this are certainly expected. The road to Istanbul now only one tie away. And as I said, what a time to be involved and I uh, just can't wait to be a part of it. Do you remember the atmosphere of those days of 2003? I was just a little child, but maybe... Yeah, you know? I, I was not a small child, I confirm. I was a normal-sized adult and it was, it was just incredible because the two sides back then, I mean, looking at these clips again, the number three, Maldini, very much involved nowadays, Paolo Maldini, and it was an incredible event. Um, it's worth remembering that that was in the uh, the era of away goals, which don't count this time. Uh, Milan went through scoring the away goal when uh, Inter were the designated home side, but it, they were incredible matches. The first one was quite cagey, quite controlled and finished nil-nil. And in the second, uh, second match, Milan got through thanks to Shevchenko's goal. And there are the scenes, Wonderful. celebrations, wild scenes. We, well, Carlo Ancelotti, we know what happened to him. Um, and, uh, it was just uh, a really good time. And it's great to be back at the pinnacle of European football. It is, and of course, for Milan to be writing a new chapter in, in the history of this competition, obviously such a rich, rich history. And look, hopefully these scenes come again because this is uh, why we love football. It's these moments that really remain in in the hearts forever and Jules, I watched this one as a child from my home in Australia so I was a long way away but I certainly remember it <laughs> very well and look having covered both Milan and Inter in the quarterfinals of uh, this season's UEFA Champions League I can tell you atmosphere in those respective legs were incredible when these two teams meet it always goes up a notch and I sure, and then you have a beautiful picture right next to you. Maybe you took it. <laughs> yes, uh, if the camera can zoom in. This is the goal we were talking about. Andriy Shevchenko scoring the uh, away goal in the second leg and uh, captured memories. But let's create some new memories. Let's uh, try, let's hope that the team can produce some new moments that will become photos on this uh, wall of fame, let's say. All right, also this will be the uh, third European derby in the history of AC Milan and Inter, but let's take a step back to what happened against Napoli, Adriano. Let's start from the uh, second leg. Let's also go back to the first leg later. Well, look, the second leg was as such that, of course, Milan came into a match against uh, a Napoli team with Ossiman for the first time right. this season. So immediately, the it was well, it was a different task. It was an interesting match. Uh, the Maradona always a special place to be, and obviously Giroud there with the the missed penalty didn't help early on. Of course, Napoli did come out attacking. They had the crowd behind them, which wasn't the case in in recent fixtures. So the atmosphere was slightly different. But I tell you what, Jussie, watching this live, that run by Rafael right. Leal, the finish from Giroud, 
and the celebration, the relief there on Giroud's face as he put Milan ahead. And obviously, that was the decisive goal in the end. Uh, the Maradona was silenced. And this man, Mike Magnan, what a player, right. what a goalkeeper, what a moment. We talk about iconic moments on that wall. That save on Kvaratskhelia, that's the moment, that's the tie done there. And Magnan, his return, we've discussed it in this program, but he has been as important as any player at Milan, and he's certainly up there with the very best goalkeepers in world football. He'll be very disappointed having conceded there late right. on. He touched it also. He, he had touched the chance it. to... Osimhen right. gets his goal, but in the end, Sheridan enough, and Milan deservedly through to the semis. Yeah, it was a, it was a European performance, and I remember saying that after the victories against uh, Tottenham Hotspur, and um, it, it's just a case of the matches, you don't have to win every match 3 or 4 nil. It's great when your team does crush the other side, and it looks good, and it gives you a you know, it's it's great to, to score loads of goals. But in Europe, you don't have to stravincere, as we say in Italy. Right. I hope my accent was okay, Juicy. You don't have to win and crush the other team every single match. And it was a really good European performance from the Rossoneri. And um, the goal, the, the run by Rafa Leao was, uh, was an extraordinary run. It was so unbelievable. He put it on a plate for Olivier Giroud. And as you pointed out, Adriano, it was a cathartic finish for Giroud after the penalty was saved by Meret. It was really good for Giroud to get the penalty miss out of his system. And it was, it was a perfect night for Milan. I spoke to Giroud after the match for the broadcast. I was covering the match four. And it was about 20 minutes or so after the match, so he had some time to let the emotion... And elaborate. ...settle in and really elaborate. But still, even 20, 30 minutes after the match, he was lost for words. He was so emotional and overcome with emotion, given what he had just been a part of, the result, and the whole time. Because he's felt it all, the disappointment, uh, the joy. Right? Absolutely. And he's a player, he, he spoke to me about the fact that he has come to this club, he's won the Scudetto, now he's in a semi-final. It was sort of, he couldn't believe what he's been able to achieve. And it was really a special conversation to have with a player who, well, he's had seven goal involvements down the Champions League this season. He leads all comers for this Milan squad. So what a player and he's going to be integral in the semi-final against Inter, no doubt. We will discuss it more later. And uh, also we have to say two penalties in this game, two saves from uh, Meret and Mike. Also, we have to point out the incredible support of the Rossoneri fans at the uh, Stadio Diego Armando Maradona, maybe for half of the game, only their chance. Yeah, this season, they've always been great fans, but this season it's been so uh, important to the team, the support that the, uh, the Milan fans have given. I remember some of the images from the match uh, in London against Chelsea, in which the result didn't go the way Milan wanted, but the fans were still incredible. And I've spoken to friends who were at Stamford Bridge who support Chelsea, who were saying they were blown away by the loyalty, by the passion, the fervour of the um, Milan supporters. And it's, uh, look at Raffaele, how he's loving it. And it was the same, uh, that, you know, Naples is a tough place to go for away teams, and it can be intimidating, but the Milan fans stood firm, stood their ground, and they helped the, uh, the boys get the result, get the tie over the line. The Maradona can be very loud, but right. I can tell you, having been there and being seated very close to where the Milan fans were, there was only a small portion of them, of course, in comparison to the home fans, but they were making their presence felt, and <clears throat> for large parts of the match, they were louder and exactly. really played exactly. a part there, which doesn't happen too often in Naples. Right, and now we're going to be listening to the words of our coach Stefano Pioli after this beautiful win. Io conosco i miei giocatori, conosco le qualità e i valori tecnici e morali della mia squadra, quindi poi dopo se, se invece all'esterno hanno degli altri giudizi, altri pareri, insomma, ci interessa e mi interessa sino lì. Eh, alleno un gruppo fantastico, un gruppo fantastico che merita tutte queste situazioni. Eh, è chiaro che abbiamo sempre fatto un passo alla volta e adesso proveremo a farne, a farne un altro ancora perché, insomma, perché abbiamo fiducia, perché ci crediamo e perché siamo il Milan. Questo gruppo mi sorprende per la per la capacità di rimanere sereno, non, non, non sembra, a volte mi, sono lì che mi preoccupo un po' perché non, non mi sembra di vederli così concentrati per degli appuntamenti così importanti, ma credo, credo che questa sia la forza dei, dei miei ragazzi, hanno una serenità dentro e una consapevolezza che per dopo poi gli permette di essere comunque pronti per questi impegni e gestire questo tipo di pressione per molti di noi era, era la prima volta averlo fatto con questa forza, con questa determinazione in un ambiente 
caldo, difficile, è stato sicuramente importante, quindi continuano a, sorprendere, eh, a sorprendermi e devono continuare a farlo perché ci sono tante cose che possiamo far meglio e noi dobbiamo pensare a migliorare ancora il nostro livello di gioco, la qualità, lo sviluppo, tante situazioni. E ieri sera io, io mi addormento sempre presto e poi dopo mi sono svegliato un po', ma vabbè insomma. Ci, ci sta, anzi mi aspettavo dei fuochi d'artificio un po' più belli sinceramente. Wow. So these were the words of our coach Stefano Pioli after the game, let's comment. Well, I mean, the first thing is he looks very, very calm. And I, I think that's not a uh, coincidence. He just, he transmits a real serenity and calmness to the squad and to anyone. I mean, he came here where we work, Casa Milan, after the Scudetto party last year. And he just seemed like a really down to earth, humble man. And I, I think uh, that was demonstrated uh, in that interview. And he got his tactics spot on. He played in a way they sat back a bit further, Milan defended a bit deeper and used Rafa Leal's speed on the break. Uh, Krunic came into midfield for the first leg and for this match and was brilliant. Uh, ben Asser just moved a little bit further forward to use his uh, energy and his vision and it all came off, it paid off and, and Pioli Pioli is on fire. I've said it, I'll say it again, let's keep saying it. He, he was on fire in that uh, tie in both legs. Absolutely, and look, coming into this month, three meetings with Napoli, the story of the season in Italy and Europe in 16 days, not many gave Milan a chance of winning all three. In the end, of course, two minutes away from doing exactly that. Mr. Pioli deserves all of the credit. And yes, you're right, Sheridan, it's the calmness, the coolness we touch on always, which certainly brings out the best in these players. Again, going to Napoli and doing that on two occasions. And really, well, he, he, he beat Spalletti at his own game on three occasions. It was a remarkable performance, true of a Champions League tie of this magnitude. And, Even his cheeky comment at the end regarding right, the Napoli right. fans' fireworks. Yeah. I like that a lot. And the fact he's still got that within him in a moment like that, it shows that he's really in control at this point in time and he believes they can go uh, another step in this competition. He said he was expecting better fireworks from the Napoli fans <laughs> who tried to keep the team up during the night before. The game didn't quite manage to um, you know, work. do what they were supposed to. Still, we're now going to be listening to the words of Radek Rune and Fikayo Tomori after the game, after giving great performances. Yes, we are there. I don't know. First, those two matches against Napoli, uh, everyone has said that they don't win Milan. So, we know our quality, we know that if we go to a game with the same intensity, with the same attitudes, possiamo battere um, ogni squadra, ma dobbiamo essere pronti per, per, per eh, ogni, ogni squadra e siamo, ab ab abbiamo fiducia con la squadra, con, uh, con, con ognuno di noi e sì, siamo felici. Sicuramente un grande traguardo per, per noi, per, uh, per la squadra, per uh, tutti i milanisti nel mondo, perché il lavoro che abbiamo fatto da, da quando abbiamo cominciato tre o quattro anni fa fino ad ora è stato, è stato molto molto diciamo curato e molto eh, siamo andati avanti tutti insieme e sicuramente che questo, questo è un grande traguardo per noi però noi eh, non ci fermiamo qua e sappiamo che abbiamo le nostre qualità che anche oggi abbiamo messo sul campo e sicuramente guardiamo avanti e, e cerchiamo il nostro avversario in semifinale. So these were the words of some of the main characters of the night. Also Rafael Yao actually came by at the very end of the interview. Let's comment. Yeah, I mean, Fikayo Tomori, along with Tomori, excuse me, along with Simon Kier, they were they were outstanding. Their right. The combination of those two, the more senior player Simon Kier, using positioning, using his experience, and, and Tomori alongside him, just playing a bit, well, playing a bit further back and covering last ditch tackling. It's it's a really powerful combination. It's a Champions League semi final combination. And Krunic we saw there, very sensible, calm man, 
lots of energy in midfield, some tenacity. So uh, those two players we just heard from, they played their part, but everyone played their part, let's be honest. I think that's the key as well, everyone played their part. But if we look back to the recent fixtures that we've covered here on this show, every week there seems to be a different name or two that we've touched on who were the important pieces to right, that right. triumph. And They're this all is, showing off at some well, point. They're all stepping up and as the comments were made there, it does take a, a team performance. And a team performance, again, of that quality will see Milan put their best foot forward in the semis. Of course, this was the first leg. Obviously, we talked about Leal's run in the in the second leg. It was Brian Diaz and Ben Acer with the finish here and Maignan again. Wonderful, wonderful team performance. Theo was fantastic in this match. So yeah. this is what's going to, to take Milan to, to be their absolute best this season. Obviously, that was a very, very close call there. And, but look, <laughs> Milan did enough in the end. That's all that matters now. It's time to look forward to what's to come in the uh, Champions League semi. But of course, you'll see still some Serie A fixtures to be played, right. which are very important exactly. as well. Exactly. Let's take a step ahead to what's going to be the game against Lecce on Sunday in San Siro. Of course, we have to uh, bring our head back up after the uh, draw mm. against Bologna. And uh, of course, we have to to keep on running to be in the Champions League of, of the um, actually next season. There's a lot of work to be done, of course. Serie A, we talked about it last week, Sheridan, before the Bologna match, but these three points, again, against Lecce, they're important. So, again, Mr Pioli expected to perhaps bring in a few yeah. new players into this one just to shuffle it around a little. But very important against Lecce, a team that are not in good form of late. So, had a draw last weekend, but six or seven defeats before that. But, of course, earlier in the campaign, it was a 2-2 uh, down south. So, look, a lot of work to do. But, again, really important three points this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that uh, the weekend against Bologna, Mr, Mr. Pioli made ten changes. Mm showed how seriously the team are taking the Champions League. But with the Champions League, uh, let's say, put in uh, put to bed for uh, a couple of weeks, it's a chance right, to get back to... Right, definitely not going to happen. <laughs> exactly. I'd be, I'd be surprised uh, if Mr Piotti will make 10 changes, but it's a good chance to, uh, to keep the good form, keep the momentum going with a positive performance against Lecce. Certainly, but there are some important Serie A fixtures to come as well in between now and that first leg. So, look, with respect to Lecce, obviously a home fixture at San Siro, there will be a few players who right. will be tired from the, the second leg of that Napoli match. No doubt about that. So, certainly not ten changes, but no. there will be two or three changes to the starting lineup, and yes, yeah, some big, big tests to come. It's going to be a really exciting few weeks for this club. Also, we're taking a look at the images of Lecce versus AC Milan to, to draw. We can say that San Siro will help up help mm. after the excitement coming from the yeah. qualification to the semi-finals, won it? Definitely, no, no doubt about that. Again, with full respect to, to this Lecce team and their recent form, San Siro, the crowd, will be a 12th man, as always. So certainly they'll need to play their role. And three points, oh, I've got a lot of confidence going into this. I think the momentum and, well, just the, the excitement off the back of being now going through to a semi-final, it's going to give these players a big push going into this uh, final period of the season. Also, we have mentioned it before, but let's go deeper into the renewal of the contract of Olivier Giroud, uh, Sheridan. He's been a revelation since he arrived. He's won so much, you know, he's got all the winner's medals you could ask for. And he brings that to the dressing room. He brings that quality. When you've got someone sitting next to you at the training ground or at San Siro before a match who has been as successful as the Frenchman, it has an impact. And uh, he's popular, he scores important goals, he scores wonderful goals as well. And uh, hopefully there's more to come from, uh, they call him Oliviero here in Italy, <laughs> not Olivier. Hopefully there's more to come from uh, Oliviero there in the lovely green third kit. We haven't seen that for a while, Juicy, but it's good <laughs> to see it back, it's still there. And the goal was uh, equally as uh, attractive. He's a player who just seems to pop up always at the right time. Right. He's super consistent and he loves the club. There's no doubt about it. For a player of such experience, he's such quality. You see there that one against Spezia. 
He's a fantastic player, he's a, he's a leader, he's got that experience and he makes everyone else uh, around him better. So what a player to have up there, up top and so important he will be, as I said, going into these final matches. Of right, the he also actually said he feels like he's always been a Rossonero. Absolutely. So now we're going to be listening to his words after renewing his contract. Per me è una conferma che faccio parte della famiglia del Milan. Io ho ricevuto una bellissima accoglienza e da quando ho parlato con Ricky, Paolo, il mister, io ho piaciuto tanto il progetto per il grande Milan e sono fiero di di tutto che ho fatto al club fino ad oggi e io voglio ancora di più. Un profumo di seconda giovinezza <ride> per me. Io sono molto orgoglioso e sempre molto motivato, determinato di, di, fare, di aiutare la squadra e e ancora di più perché è il grande Milan e sì, quando io l'ho detto prima, quando ero piccolo in Italia eh, per me era la squadra, solo una squadra e sì, sì, sono, sono qua a fare delle belle cose per il club e io voglio continuare così. Ieri era un'emozione particolare, speciale, perché sì, mi ricordavo che questa partita l'anno scorso era determinante per la, uh, la corsa alla Scudetto e volevo anche fare il meglio, dare il meglio per la, la squadra su uh, ieri sera. Volevo giocare 100% questa, questa partita per andare in semifinale. Uh, è vero che questo gol uh, lo aspettavo dopo il rigore che ho sbagliato e volevo fare tutto per, per fare il gol e, perché ero un po' deluso, ma non ho mai molato e crederci fino alla fine sempre se queste cose sono le mie valori. And these were the words of our Olivier Giroud, is the second youth. Lucky him. He's enjoying his life, he's enjoying his football. He was a, a peripheral figure at Chelsea, but at Milan, he's the main man. And uh, he's in the spotlight, and there's a lot of pressure, positive pressure on him, on his shoulders. And he's loving every minute of it. And he's delivering. And we said before, but he feels like he's been here forever, and he's really recaptured really some of his very, very best form. And I said, he's a player that just pops up at the right time. He scored some big goals, of course. Unfortunately, this game was the, the first meeting with Napoli this season that didn't go Milan's way, but he scored big goals at the right time. And he said there, what I liked what he said was when he missed the penalty, and he told me this after the match as well, when he missed the penalty, which is very rare for him to do, right. he knew he was going to score. He had that feeling that I must score. He was determined to make amends, and only top players have that ability to do that and turn it around. He did that, deservedly so, and He's written himself into the history of this club and he's not done just yet. It was like 11 years since he... It was last over 10 years. 10 over years? 10 years. 2012, right. the last time he missed a penalty. So, look, he, it doesn't happen too often for Olivier Giroud, but he'll be hungry to continue scoring, I've got no doubt. OK, we've discussed everything about the first team. We're now going to be jumping into the world of our AC Milan women. They are also breathing the atmosphere of a derby from one derby to another because AC Milan women is waiting to be playing against Inter, Sheridan. Derby time everywhere you look and they're always important and this one, this one is a, a match that Milan need to win just to try and get back on the right path um, and you don't need any extra motivation when you're facing uh, the Nerezzurre, the cousins as it were. So it should be a really good chance for Mr. Gans's side to put their best foot forward and put on a really good performance and uh, make a statement before the semi-final. Good time to get them as well into conceded six 
last week against Roma. So, look, an opportunity for Milan here, but obviously, how many five or so matches to go in the season, share and get as many points as possible, finish as high as possible, but another deadly is upon us. Right, and also we have to point out that AC Milan and Inter are coming to the Derby with the same amount of points. There are 35 right now, so, so it's, it's crucial. It's very it important. is. Every point matters, every point counts. It's crucial, and uh, as I say, maybe just to start the mood rolling for the Men's Champions League semi-final, the women can put a marker down on the uh, on behalf of the red and black side of this city. Thank you very much, Schrodenberg, for being with us today. My pleasure. I've enjoyed it so much, Julie. Adriano Del Monte, thank you. Grazie, Giussi. Pleasure as always. We've discussed everything about the uh, Rossoneri colors, and we'll be meeting again after everything that's going to be happening next week. Thank you for being with us. See you next week. Ciao.